Ladies and gentlemen, Miko Hayes. All right. Hey, Miko, thanks for joining us today. Miko is an independent journalist, founder of The Daily Hayes, which was, I know, shocking, right? Deleted by Facebook after reaching nearly 60,000 organic followers. He is now the founder of Discuss Global. You can find his website at discussglobal.com. Miko, thanks so much for joining us. How are you doing today? Yeah, thanks for having me, Adam. I'm doing pretty good. How are you? I'm I'm great, despite all of this bitching and navel gazing with censorship and what we're up and how tempting it is to throw our hands up in the air. Uh, you know, as much as I have to complain about, I don't know what would, would I rather have been deleted than shadow banned. Uh, you sound a bit like a broken man. How are you doing? This just before we get into the material of this topic, I want to kind of check in with you emotionally. You know, like as a content creator who's been stifled unfairly that's gotta suck no well <laughs> yeah, yeah i mean it does it, it it well it came at a bad bad time too um see i don't know yeah we lost a page that had uh just right around sixty thousand organic i never gave facebook any money um and then a month after they deactivated the page all the admins got a 30-day ban for the profile picture which was the logo um then i got my main profile disabled which had right around twenty thousand followers um in the middle of a live stream uh, about a, a corrupt district attorney like literally in the middle of the live stream they stopped my stream and disabled my account and my alt account uh, well, I hope you learned your lesson to never expose corruption in government yeah. again. Yeah, yeah, I sure did. <laughs> um, but the shitty thing is, is that came after Standing Rock. So, I mean, honestly, that's a weird question. That's a good question because it does, it does fuck you up. Um, I was also in Standing Rock at a while for a while there, and people that uh, I've talked to a lot of people that feel the same way like to watch such a big movement just fall apart from some of their higher ups backstabbing them lying to the people having these backdoor deals and shit and to just watch something that you've never seen before fall apart was super defeating and then after that you completely lose your platform so you know it, it definitely merging the two together was kind of a well why the fuck are we trying this? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, I mean it. It's definitely a defeating feeling, but also at the same time, I mean, it's a free platform, and it's not protected any, under any sort of First Amendment. So, well, hold, hold on, hold on. Before okay, now you're raising a whole other topic, and I and I want to get to this too because you know there's there's this common you know refrain when we complain about censorship people the government apologists say well that's a private platform they can censor whoever they want well not under american corporatism they're not not when i'm being taxed to subsidize things that profit them and it's not oh the first amendment needs to apply but that you know, like we talked about earlier on the show today in in my case i can very confidently say that youtube is committing a fraud against me they have the right to censor me. They have the right to kick me off the platform, but you do not have a right to deceive somebody else in order to materially exploit them. And that's what's going on. You say this is a free platform and it's great to be appreciative and say, look, this is free, but you've heard this about Facebook, right? If the, if, if the product is free for you, maybe you're the product and it's your attention that's being sold and manipulated and if you want to look back at like the, the history of how much freedom did we have as independent media on the internet, there was kind of a, a golden era that seems to have passed now. Like this whole thing was a fraud. Oh, look, let's get everybody hooked on this and then steer it in another direction. But before we get into any of that, because I do want to hear your take on, on all of those issues that, that are raised in that. But I, the, the emotional aspect of this, I think, is, is I didn't expect to go this way with it, but I think it really is under discussed because it's not just 
hey, you got censored. This con- you are now cut off from your audience. It's you're you're psychologically emotionally damaged, and I'm happy to admit this. Like that, I have felt a lot of ongoing personal negative emotions as a result of the overwhelming frustration and uh, I've experienced in the way that I've been victimized as a content creator that has led me. And, you know, I, I'm at a good point now where I'm saying, you know what, fuck it all. I'm going to produce consistent content in my voice to my message that I love, that I know my audience appreciates. But I've been manipulated before where, hey, videos that do this get more views. Videos that don't include this don't get censored. You should change your content and then you'll be more successful. You had a movement specifically in front of you fall apart. It's got to hurt. What are the bigger effects of that? Um, you know, honestly, there, there's like depression, anxiety, shit like that. I mean, that honestly comes from, but you know, it's weird though. Cause I don't, I don't know. I've kind of, I've noticed it with a good chunk of journalists and then especially like the independent journalist side. And then you get over to like the crossover. Cause I didn't just do articles and like sit down stuff like since Ferguson, I'd been out like live streaming and shit in the actual streets um, you know, dancing with the tear gas, all that. And I kind of like Ford Fisher. Um, I'm yeah. not, uh, Ford, I, I can see it with him. Um, you know, Revolutionary Z, John Ziegler, I've seen it with him. It's almost like independent journalists are already just this thing, this entity that isn't a person. You know, people forget that they have emotions and they have opinions and they're not supposed to ever say anything along those lines. But then you get into the live streaming side and it's almost like they become more of just a object, like, like even a level below where it's just not recognized that maybe this person is a human being and eats food and takes shits. And, you know, <laughs> um, and maybe you, we should just, make more videos like that. Well, and I, I get it though, because I mean, it's through a screen. It's hard to make that connection and remember that you know you're not just looking at a screen; you're looking at a person. Yeah, there's a there's a celebrity effect for anyone on the internet appearing that you only connect with over video that oh, yeah. we've had sort of from general celebrity culture of oh, they're a public figure. I can say whatever I want about them; it, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I don't read YouTube comments. Like, but one thing, like, also, I've I've been uh, debunking Q shit for a while, so I get like the real. Wait a second, cr- you've been you've been debunking <laughs> Q shit. Are you trying to tell me that hardcore <laughs> Donald Trump supporters who believe internet fantasies need to be corrected, and that Donald Trump isn't really secretly oh. doing good stuff underneath all of the evil shit he's doing as Man. president? Shocking, shocking, Miko. But yeah, so I, I get I get the the crazy, crazy hate. Like just that real raw makes no fucking sense, illogical, I hate you and I want to kill your whole family stuff. So I, I don't I don't read YouTube comments. I like have my live comments up and I'll answer when it's live and I'll talk shit back and forth to people, but nah, I don't I don't go back and read through that shit. But it is interesting though, like especially with the Q stuff. Um kind of getting off topic but you know actually not even let's not even do that um well no i mean you any of these things though you can bring it back well to, it, it, it plays into the censorship it, it plays into the censorship because i mean like at this point the q group i just uh talked to will sommer i think it is over at the daily beast um because they're starting to get into this group of lunatics i was covering for a while uh, like Timothy Charles Homeseth and Field McConnell and Timothy Homeseth, that's actually who started that crazy shit that there was uh, children in underground tunnels being rescued and shit. So not only at this point, though, is there two kidnappings related to Q uh, from that little children being rescued in tunnels thing. You had the train conductor that tried to ram his train into the USS Comfort. Um, you had what is her name jessica uh she's a stripper from like oregon that drove across the country on live stream talking about how she was going to kidnap a kid with her drug addict buddy while threatening mike pence's life 
armed with a bunch of knives that drove to the USS Mercy because she believed that the children were being rescued and taken to, that was one of the big beliefs that all the children being rescued from the underground tunnels in New York were being taken to the Mercy and the Comfort. So yeah, this train conductor, which seemed like a completely normal fucking guy, long career, threw his life away trying to bring attention to this crazy ass conspiracy. This Jessica bitch drove across the country threatening the president, left her kid at home, ended up getting her kid taken, um, was arrested in New York, all this crazy shit because of the children in the tunnels. So like with this Cushion, those aren't the only instances. You're seeing physical actions in the real world, but there's they're just now, I will say like Twitter just now started putting a foot down on the Q guys. And that it's <laughs> I don't know it, that that's why it actually is a fitting uh, it's a fitting topic because there's this weird question of should these assholes be censored because they're fucking crazy and they're driving people crazy but at the same time what does that open up for everyone else kind of like the Alex right Jones, right well, uh, that, that, that raises two big questions I want to ask you then because let's jump to the next third rail we can grab here pedophilia shall we uh, oh, this boy. Is, because this this is what they use as the excuse to censor people, right? Well, you yeah. could be a pedophile, you could be hurt. We have to, and my response to this right away is I mean, first of all, censorship backfires every time. When you say hey, we're gonna stifle this thing that someone is trying to communicate, as opposed to just ignore it or come over the top with better, more positive information, there is going to be some kind of Streisand effect or unintended consequence. And when, when I hear people saying, we have to censor pedophiles off of Twitter, I'm like, wait, really? Why? What's going on? And they, they've tried to tell me there are pedophiles operating in the open, grooming kids on Twitter who government is ignoring. And instead of exposing them, at least to vigilante justice, what they want to do is censor them. And I go, wait a second. If there's a pedophile who's dumb enough to expose himself publicly on Twitter, why would you want to stop them from doing that? It seems like it's really obvious to me in that case, but they have used this as the wedge to say, well, we, we need some censorship, and then here we are. Well, and that's like what they've done with past uh, internet uh, censorship bills and whatnot. They've tried to lead the fight with pedophilia. Like, if you don't condone this, then you're for pedophilia. Um, it's funny though, on the pedophile topic, because actually the, <laughs> the very day that CJ asked me about coming on your show that night, I had a, uh, I did a live on Rick and Morty's, uh, co-created Dan, Dan Harmon. Harmon's, yeah, the Dan Harmon's race. video, um, <laughs> like 10 minutes into my live on Facebook, it was banned in 18 countries. And then on YouTube, it was uh, eventually taken down. But the funny See, this, thing is, this, this is the, sorry, I got to jump in here. This is the danger of the censorship thing. If they say we're going to censor anything that mentions pedophilia, then you're censoring anything that is anti-pedophilia. Well, it's see, like with, with racism and sexism on Facebook. Well, if you make a racist comment on your Facebook page, and someone you knew in middle school, you know, who's your friend from whatever complains about that post then your neighbors aren't going to find out that they have a racist neighbor well and see though the problem is like i was because that video is a little tricky to find like your your common your common person which that's somebody i've been trying to relate to more um just with how the country is going unfortunately but your common person that gets a majority of their information from like social media memes most likely isn't going to be able to go find that video. And it is a fucked up video. I don't know if you've seen it, but it is definitely. Yeah, it's, it's fucked up. Do you know, it, sidebar here, if you, if you don't, if you'll indulge me for a second, because I'm a big fan of Rick and Morty. I love the show. It's fun. It's funny. It's thought provoking. It's, uh, you know, high tech science fiction concepts. I, I find them great. You know, uh, this thing with, with Dan Harmon, it, it is a, it's fair to call it a baby rape skit yeah but you wouldn't say there but hold on you wouldn't say because dan Harmon plays a pedophile he must be a pedophile any more than any actor playing a murderer must be a murderer 
you know, maybe he's got really bad taste in trying to be provocative. Can you decisively condemn him of, of something worse with this? I, you know, I don't know. Even being a fan of dark humor, I mean, I, I guess the way I look at it is I get it. <laughs> I mean, dude, you, you fucked a baby doll and, well, technically raped a baby doll on video, then posted it online. I mean, I get it. I get why people are going to read your ass. <laughs> there's, Figuratively, there's, not literally, hopefully. You, well, I, I mean, Most I don't know. Can. You know, that's kind of a creepy part, like, on the Q thing. Like, Timothy Homeseth in specific, who really does help create a lot of these bullshit things. I can't help but wonder if it hasn't become an outlet for some of these people's fantasies. It's such... It, to sit there and think of these very detailed, weird child rape being drained of blood, all this crazy shit they're saying. I don't sit there and think that. Like, what well, would you say? Would you? But would you? Would uh, and I'm I'm kind of playing devil's advocate here. But then, would you accuse everybody who composes a murder mystery of having murder fantasies? Possibly. No, then, I don't know about then, everyone, but right, right. But then, then there's then there's the other like you 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 hinted at there. There's the flip side to this. If we were to look at pedophilia objectively, scientifically, and say, hey, there's a certain amount of pedophiles out there. If you suppress pedophilia, you're going to get more rapes. Well, yeah, suppression if, doesn't work. If you That's... welcome it into the open, you give people outlets, you give people sex dolls. Maybe you get less rapes. Now, maybe you don't have to encourage pedophilia, but you do have to acknowledge it one way or another in order to say, how do we address this so that there are less child rapes, right? Well, yeah, that's kind of like the uh, Trotla argument. I don't know if you ever saw the uh, Trotla company with the child sex dolls. They've been banned in a few countries. Like a couple years ago, I want to say like two years ago, they were banned in Australia. I think you can still order them in America. Um that's like the two sides of the argument there, or or one of the two sides. Um, one of them is that the doll will fulfill those urges, and the other argument to that is how long until the fantasy has to become a reality. Does it, right. Does it encourage a real crime? Do yeah. we have the science on that? No, I don't because think the science so. is the threat. Well, we have this weird way of dealing with things where we just kind of be like no that's bad we're not gonna i mean that that's the problem with prostitution and drug use and all that we don't address it we most people don't even realize it which is really odd with this trafficking shit like this whole crazy if ass prostitution queue. was legal child trafficking would not be a fucking thing oh, legalize would, it, prostitution to protect the kids it's it would, fucking insane it would kill it down so much. And then also people don't realize the logical steps they can take. Like they're out here saving this ridiculous fucking save the children hashtag, but they don't realize in their own County in their own city in their own state victims of trafficking are treated like criminals. Like they're, they're not, you're, you know, a prostitute, you're a child prostitute committing it, crime. Yeah. You know, that chick that's scared that this dude's going to murder her whole fucking family all of a sudden is the ringleader of this prostitution thing, because why not? Yeah. So it, it's weird to see all that. Um, just no real answers coming out of it. But it does see. And I don't know, like and on the pedophilia thing, it's it's really weird because it's not being censored um, right now on Facebook. There are literally thousands of like I, we stopped looking into them because there's so many um of these like boy groups these like boy worship groups child worship groups where the thing is because i've talked to local police and i've talked to fbi about it they share these pictures of like boys in swimsuit suits and little girls in swimsuits shit like that definitely suggestive but it's not pornography it's not breaking any law it's creepy as shit it's but there's no law against just sharing these pictures and saying oh you know they're they're models whatever bullshit they want to go with but these pages don't get taken or these groups and shit they they don't get taken down normally unless you know i don't i don't even know it's very i that's one thing i haven't even figured out how exactly they get taken down because they're such 
a disproportion of these groups that are reported and the ones that are taken down. Like for every 20 or 30 that are taken down or reported, one or two might be taken down. But then at the same time, like I remember I did an article and, and even that Dan Harmon live I was doing, technically I was exposing this pedophilia possibly behavior and my stream was shut off. Before that, one of the last times, I caught a 30-day ban on Facebook. They blocked my article URL from Facebook, and it was an article on this guy posing as a family ph uh, photographer who was really taking pics of kids' feet and then, or feet, and then he was fucking trading them on like a VK.com and shit in these fetish feet groups. I, I tracked him through different, like I think it was four different sites with like adult feet fetish shit. And he was trading these picks. That was my article. And I got put in jail for 30 days and his page stayed up. So, you know, it's, I, I, I don't even know. Like, I had never seen that before either. Uh, last Wednesday when I was doing that on uh, Dan, it, it cut up. I use Restream. Um, so it's, things just got weird on my Restream. And then so I went and looked on my phone and checked my notifications. And sure enough, I had a notification saying my video was banned in 18 countries. Now, the super weird part, because YouTube removed it as well, it apparently violated YouTube uh, community standard. But neither Facebook or YouTube told me what community standard I violated, and I didn't get in any trouble on either platform. Like, I didn't, I, it, it didn't count as a strike on YouTube. I'm not in Facebook jail. But it just couldn't be there. So that's so. And and I'd like to point out also with the Dan Harmon video, I censored the shit out of it. I had a blur even over just the baby doll when it was just the baby doll. Like any time the baby doll was on camera, I blurred it and I bleeped out the word rape and any other. I mean, I over censored this fucking thing, and still. <laughs> done like 10 minutes in done so Migo I'm really enjoying this and I think this conversation so far is kind of like a prelude if you don't mind staying on for the rest of the hour I think finishing this conversation is more important than any of the headlines I've got pulled up yeah oh yeah no 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 okay. I already told you guys I'm I'm fine okay with yeah I don't yeah and you know, I, I want to I want to ask a couple bigger questions, and I want to give our live audience a chance to ask you some questions as well. And me, if you guys have questions for me, given all the stuff that you know we've covered today and, and censorship and, and journalism issues, uh, but there there are two bigger, well, sort of like three bigger general subjects that I want to cover with you, if you can. One, what is the effect on the general conversation for? everybody the average american the, the general understanding of what's going on in the news and current events i want to talk to you about what we do as independent creators to stay viable against these challenges business-wise community-wise broadcasting technology organization all of those things and then finally really you know what can we do about this uh, as a community of content creators uh, as the audiences of, of people like us who care about these things and again for just any conscientious news consumers as a whole but first let's see if, if we can get jim up here on stage jim freedom uh, our, our co-host uh who's watching the comments and has been a part of this you know he's been a fan of mine for a long time who then just recently stepped into this role as co-host and has been kind of like Oh shit, Adam! I didn't know this is all we were up against, right? It's kind of new for you, Jim. So, Jim, if you have any uh, any comments you want to share uh, with, with Nico from the audience, or questions, or any, anything you want to inject with yourself, please go ahead. I have no sound on Jim. Jim, sorry, is that better? There, there we go. go. I don't know how I got muted. Sorry about that. Um, First, I just wanted to say this is a great discussion. Uh, it's been great hearing. I mean, I'm, it's not great hearing everything that you've been through, but it's important to hear it on the platforms. You know what I mean? I was just sitting here thinking like you, you how badly you got censored on the things you got. I'm wondering how badly we're going to get censored with this video just talking about it. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> if we're not going to get censored any more than we normally already are, 
then at least some of us, at least some of our viewers that are hardcore watchers are going to be seeing the and hearing the next level of censorship because what you're going through is even it seems a little bit even worse than what adam's going through kind of i mean to, to a varying degree i guess it seems more like you were saying in the middle of your live stream you got cut off that's crazy man oh that's, yeah you know. two accounts two accounts deactivated in the middle of a live stream that's wild I but you know and that's another thing that i forgot earlier um on the whole thing of like the where where it's just not really talked about and the sort of emotional damage and shit that it does and where that depression and anxiety and shit comes from i lost so many things i will never get back like i i've been streaming and doing this shit since ferguson um this happened in 2018 so i had four years of traveling the country i was at the inauguration i i live streamed from hurricane irma I I lost so much shit that's just gone. Gone yeah, that's forever. That's wrong, man. I mean, there's no other word for it. That is wrong. To take one, no matter what you were talking about on the one video you got banned from, to take everything else away from you, it's just absolutely wrong. Criminal, in my opinion. But uh, it hurt. That that's it. Wait, that's are you trying to say it. that? Are you trying to say that governments and the corporations uh, would rewrite history? To favor their narrative? Shocking. Never. I know. I know. Mind blowing. They wouldn't do that. Well, no, and, and you know what? It's it, one of the things I just want to point out, and I, I hate to go back to those sarcastic comments, like, as a, but I just it's it's so overwhelming. There is a kind of I hope I hope the audience can hear the pain in our voices underneath all this laughter. You know, the tears of a clown here that are like behind this when. You know, we're trying to point out the injustices of the world, and you get shut down. It, it's it's the frustration is really overwhelming, and it's tempting to think, oh, we're in the age of the internet. Everybody's enlightened. The information is free. Things are different now. And then you go, no. The more things change, the more things stay oh, the, the same. Uh, we're still fighting these power dynamics. The the state of Alabama actually tried to sue me one time to get me to stop reporting on a story that was a thing i think it was a total of six hundred thousand dollars they were suing me for three hundred thousand and then suing the daily Hayes for another three hundred thousand kidding me what was the story uh they had wrongfully taken these uh two children's uh dhr did i think it's dhr in alabama uh, they had taken these two children wrongfully. Uh, they were twins. Well, okay. First, there was a newborn baby that they took that was one of the twins' daughters uh, that, like, just had her kid. And then they came and they took the twins, the mother, and they were, like, 17 or so. So they lived with their grandmother um, along with her sister. And or her grandmother and grandfather. Um, I actually went to Alabama. Like, I, it was Birmingham, Alabama. I met the family. Like, the grandparents, the grandfather is a retired police officer, and the grandmother is a retired teacher. Their house, I mean, they are Alabama Christians. They, they cooked me homemade dinner, and we prayed before we ate and shit. So they come in, they take this newborn baby, um, and then they come back and they take the twins and it turns out like the twins' mom was kind of a, just not, she didn't have her shit together. She never had her rights terminated. The grandparents allowed her to still see them. Uh, they never wanted her completely cut off, but she just didn't have her shit together. So the older sister also lived with the grandparents and they said that the grandparents weren't capable of raising these kids and shit. And what happened was I actually stayed up all night the morning before or the night before court, one of their court dates, which when we went to the courthouse, there was no, there was like signs posted on the door saying no cell phones or anything like this. Cause by this point, uh, my story went pretty fucking viral, like the original one. And then there was also a video of them taking the infant that went uh, viral. So they like literally shut down the courthouse from anybody seeing what was going on basically um 
That morning, though, like 30 minutes before court, because I kind of wanted to catch them off guard where they couldn't respond, I released a document that I obtained that showed just a week prior the grandmother had been approved by DHR to take the sister and her child. So DHR literally approved this household one week, and then the next week came and removed these children. Which they ended up getting the children home, but it got pretty rocky there. Like, I was told there was uh, executive orders and shit uh, placed all throughout the state of Alabama that no government workers could speak to me or the Daily Hayes, anybody representing the Daily Hayes. Which, and at that point, I mean, like monthly, the Daily Hayes, before I stopped that, we were pulling between 1.3 and 3.7 million readers and shit that month. So, I mean, that's that's hard to do on a website these days, <laughs> especially an underfunded and not cooperating website. Um, but yeah, it was crazy. I had like their different uh, state reps and shit contacting me and their attorney just like their attorney tried to talk my attorney out of representing me because they said I was a loose cannon. <laughs> like It was fucking crazy, man. It was super fucking crazy. But yeah, that happened because I let out that little piece of information that one week ago you said this house is cool this week and that was a they tried for six hundred thousand dollars <laughs> they dropped they, that uh it they didn't even file the fucking thing correct like uh, so it was just it was a it was a it was a harassment it was more well, of a threat to, to, when, to, to, to stop covering the story what they did is they actually came out at lunch like a couple hours after i released that document and they slapped like nine of us with a lawsuit including the grandparents and we were all actually being sued on behalf of the infant uh, me i know in particular i was being sued for po potential damages in the future to the infant because <laughs> I I don't even know the guardian, the guardian at all or uh, at all. Yeah, it was fucking. It was them suing on behalf of the baby. Guardian so when people say we yeah. or yeah, guardian ad when, yeah. uh, when we when we hear people say we have a government run by pedophiles, it's tempting to dismiss that as sensationalism, but it's it's just exaggeration. And we do have a government that is essentially whether you. I mean, maybe it's just still an exaggeration, but to say that we have a government. Uh, that is that is clearly infiltrated by pedophiles. I didn't expect that. Uh, really, we're talking about censorship, and then we end up talking about pedophilia this much. It does kind of make sense uh, that we we make that that natural connection that a lot of the censorship that is happening online is to protect pedophiles. And well, you can see, you know, because every other one, I've I've like figured out some sort of workaround for the most part. Now, granted, like I was taking care of my grandma with dementia for like two years. Um, I kind of backed off stuff while I was doing that. She just passed away in March, so I'm just now like starting to get back into the swing of shit. And so I'm like trying to figure out these on like touch and go, how to work around and shit. I don't know how to do this work around on like trying to expose, like actually expose any sort of pedophilia shit, which is weird. Because these Q assholes can run around just pointing their finger at everybody, but then if you have some actual documentation, you get shut down. Like it's yeah. fucking frustrating. Yeah. It's very frustrating. So I, I just want to I want to be clear. I'm not trying to say that we have a government run by pedophiles. I don't think that's fair. But we have a government seriously infiltrated by pedophiles who are running major parts of it influencing major parts of it protecting themselves and other pedophiles with government legal mechanisms as in this case and you go yeah this is this is the root of the problem and it's not pedophilia and censorship in government it's government and censorship being used to protect all kinds of criminals murderers thieves those are the, the primary ones that governments protect right people who murder for war and people who steal through government but I, I want to go back to our audience. Jim, do you have any other any comments you want to share, questions from our, our live audience to share with Miko? Uh, there's no questions on the subject matter, no. We've put in, uh, we can just go ahead and ask the audience live. If you have any questions, just put at Adam or at Miko, 
and we can get your questions there. We put it in the chat too, so people know. I think people, this is like the quietest I've seen the chat in a good while. So I think people are really just tuned in and listening and it's, it's good information, you know. So All right, maybe, well, we'll maybe check now that we made a point of it, they'll, they'll think of some questions. Okay, thank you, Jim. We'll check back in with you in, about, in the audience in about 10 minutes here. Miko, let's get to these bigger questions. First, for the average American, the average human being on earth as a news consumer, what do they have to know based on understanding that censorship is as rampant as it is? Um, that they're, honestly, that they're part of the problem. At least a good percentage are because this shit where and you know it's not even trying to knock anybody it's i i i like to think that there aren't stupid people until they refuse to learn something that's when you become fucking stupid um the just mindlessly sharing uh not fact checking anything seeing a fucking meme and taking it as gold and running with it that is a big part of what is affecting us like it's it, it's a it, it, this is a relationship you know we need we need people to make sure they're not flooding shit because we're the ones getting punished for that shit unfortunately um and the people pushing that shit still like i said the most frustrating part they they aren't being punished for it Except for, like I said, tip, tip of the hat to Twitter. They at least kind of started to clamp down on Q, which again, though, that's a double-edged sword. That's, that's, you, can't, you can't hand it to them for that because that's a deception. They're clamping down on Q, so they have an excuse to clamp and, down and on their political that's where, opponents. That's where I said double-edged sword. But also, though, you know, they, see, There's I don't no know. Positive then, edge. There's no positive edge to censoring Q. It gives them more credibility. And I think and about Twitter knows this. Twitter true. knows the strike and effect. I, I mean, I, I want to. I really do want to challenge you on this one, Nico, because I don't that, agree with you here. That that's true. Well, no, and see, that's where I'm not even saying I agree with me. I just, <laughs> <laughs> I just honestly, I don't know what to do with it because it is like, man, there are pe their mental health is bad in this country, and there are people that just aren't processing this Q stuff right. And it's turning them into threats to other people. So that's where it's like. Okay, okay. But by that argument, you better censor every single military recruiting ad off the face of the planet. No, and I'd give you that. That'd be similar. Um, but, you know, at least. At least they somewhat understand they're killing a person and not killing some baby blood drinking alien from another planet like i don't i don't know i don't know that's 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 what the, you, you know how bad the military engages in propaganda against the troops to demonize the enemy oh yeah that's that's always been a thing though i mean i guess actually yeah they barely look at them as human because that's part of the thing is making the enemy uh just we completely didn't treat dehumanizing them like human beings. they were all no. fucking hajis no, and I mean, that's like 9-11. People don't even, we never really talked about or thought about what it was like to be, in a, be a Muslim uh, right after 9-11 happened. Like, holy shit, man, that was not a good time <laughs> to be a brown person in this country, especially in New York. You had people getting beat in the fucking street, their shops getting burnt down, shit like that. And that's something that we never really talked about. So I, so, I want to ask you to reframe your answer, though. For the benefit of your audience and my audience and anybody else who might be watching this, not to not to the general American public, like, hey, you're part of the problem. Because I agree. But if you were coaching people in a more positive way to be more conscientious consumers of information, what's your advice? See, and I, I, I do try and do that. I try and tell people to not even listen to me. Um, just, like, look look stuff up verify stuff it's not that a meme cannot be taken as gold it just can't uh, i think probably and that would be one of the biggest ways that's one of the frustrating parts about all these things that you don't want just spreading like 
that would be the thing is let them say it, but stop spreading it. Like maybe that would be an answer. Just, just the fact checking thing I think is so important and so not used by uh, uh, unfortunately at least 60% or more of social media users. I mean, just, I don't know if you saw the uh, Portland beating that just happened with, yeah. uh, Okay, so yeah, the guy uh, pulled out of his truck and kicked in the street. Yeah, um, Adam and I'm Adam uh, Hainer, Hainer, and then uh, Marquise Marquise Love, Quise Love was the guy that kicked him. Um, I just did a live on that yesterday, and one of the things that I made sure to point out was that everybody thought that he was dead. And it turned out this one person's post on Facebook, just one person in 23 hours, the post was shared 186,000 times before it was taken down. And the lady even posted after that saying that he was alive. I Like, I, I know what she was doing. She was just being a piece of garbage and trying to flame shit and enjoying her social media attention. But, uh, yeah, it was shared 186,000 times, and there was nothing absolutely nothing backing it up not one shred of evidence that showed that adam hayner had died in fact by that point the gofundme was already up yeah right, so, for, so if I may, I, I, yeah my experience with this story i saw the kicked and killed headline and right. not, you know and, and it, honestly i looked into it a little bit but i and i realized hey this is a sensationalist outlier story that, like, see, and I want to, I want to tell my viewers on Adam versus the Man that I didn't bring them that story because it's an incident that I know is going to be twisted and misrepresented, and it's going to be, it's already being blown up into sensationalist headlines. And if you just read the headlines, I, I, man, I read Drudge Report almost every day, and I, I get pissed about how badly the headlines from the mainstream media, even on Drudge are deliberately twisting reality. I think not. And then I, there was another study I saw, this was like a month ago maybe, that, that said most people who share stories on social media read the headlines and share them without reading the story. Oh, yeah. No, actually, a few years back, me and my friend, uh, we did this experiment on the Daily Haze, and it actually it went way farther than we fucking expected. So my friend Casey's Filipino, and this was like during one of the uh, terrorists, fucking ISIS is going to kill us all scares going on, you know, and I was wondering, like, does America even know what what our enemy looks like? Like, what are what are they freaking out about right now? So I took my Filipino friend and I put him as a uh, he had like this terrible fucking passport picture. It was just terrible. <laughs> And I put him as the cover photo, and then the title was something like uh, ISIS member arrested at border or some shit like that. And then if you clicked on the article, it actually said this picture is not an ISIS terrorist. He's actually a Filipino man. He's my friend. Um, and then I went into some information about like the actual origin of ISIS, shit like that. And we were trying to, like, I was, I went to work. I was living in Florida at the time and I was working in this bar. My phone was just going fucking crazy. And my friend Casey is like freaking out. And he's like, dude, my fucking mom saw the article. It's all fucking over. Like, <laughs> and he was right. It had went viral since I left my apartment. And so when I got home, I just found this stock picture of a Filipino man and switched it out. Um, can we find but, this and pull it up to show people? Is it still out there? I, I no, I took the site down altogether. Whenever Facebook, like I was already at a point where I kind of didn't like the direction I was getting pushed into with it, and then we lost like our entire social media following. I had some issues with uh, the people that were hosting the site, and so I was just like, "Fuck it, I'm going to start something new." But uh. We we actually we were trying to track that art, article as best as we could through different shares and whatnot, and all around Casey and his brother. His brother's a pretty smart little motherfucker, 
uh, he like actually did some more in depth shit. And we found it was something like 40% actually read the story. Um, I think maybe another 50%, a little over 50% did not read and just shared the headline. And then like the last like 10% were people that were just completely off in their own world. <laughs> it didn't, didn't really make any sense to anything in the article. So we just kind of put them in this little weird category. Like, okay, you guys really don't know what you're talking about. But then like in the comments and he spent like days doing this and putting it together. Um, he did find, I think it was like 30% of the people that only read the headline and shared it had someone correct him in the comments and be like, did you even read the article that you just shared out? And then from there, it was like an even smaller percentage that would recognize that. Like when somebody said that, they'd be like, oh shit, you're right. Okay, my bad. <laughs> and then the, the, confirmation the, bias setting in. The other percentage would just argue their point still. Like, well, this may not be, but still, fuck those terrorists. Like, oh, okay, that's still, though. <laughs> I want to do an experiment like this myself, but I feel like my audience, I, I would hope, is too smart. Like, how many people in my on my social media are dumb enough to share an experiment? I mean, like, I, and I, I admit, like, I've done it myself a couple times. On Twitter, I've seen, you know, and I think, oh, well, it's a credible source. You know, someone's, you know, there's the headline, and it's making a good point. I don't need to know more. And I'll share it. And there's, there, there are a couple things at work here. You know, one, the, the positive desire to understand the world more efficiently. But what you're talking about isn't that. What you're talking about from this experiment is that people go online not for the purpose of learning what's going on in the world as much as to stroke their own egos engage their confirmation bias and verify their worldviews, not challenge themselves intellectually in any way. And that oh, really has that, created that, sort of toxicity. That, that's what you're seeing with the save the children hashtag. Like, you know, one, one thing that would be better than uh, sharing basically anything with the save the children hashtag would be going and donating your time at a shelter that deals with victims of trafficking. Oh hey, but, I I know how I know how I'm going to do this experiment. We're we're gonna w w let's test the QAnon community, should we? Shall we? Oh, what if what man. if the, what if the fake headline was Trump finally publicly explains how he's taking down pedophiles. And then the 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 content and just make I just make a blog post, you know. Put a do a Facebook post here. I just put us on Facebook and put a picture of Trump with with some cops looking serious, and 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 something that just like validates ah, it's the final confirmation of everything. Q and then have yeah, the content you'd, you'd, of the story just be like, no, it's Q's all bullshit. You'd want to use the word confirm. I think right, I think okay. like I think like. Trump confirms war on pedophilia or something like that would probably oh because that's the whole Q thing I think there's this Q, war Q fans vindicated that's the ultimate clickbait isn't it for them that's pretty up there it's odd okay. yeah it's just odd they definitely yeah. like like the stronger like like the word it, it, and I have noticed that and it almost feels like they even give more credibility to those people like if, if you have patriot <laughs> and like strong patriot 9287 or woke patriot and it's like oh well this dude fucking totally knows what he's talking about it's so bizarre well but so there I, I just want to point out before I get to my last big question for you we check back in with our audience in the last few minutes of the show here is that there there's a kind of psychological manipulation going on in the bigger picture here where if you are beaten down in any way if you are economically distressed if you are insecure if you are confused if you're afraid uh, of things real or imagined you have with you a certain 
vulnerability to manipulation. And a lot of people who are in that kind of emotional state that has been deliberately created for most citizens of the world, one way or another, you are more likely to engage with the internet, not as a way of seeking truth, but of seeking clarity and validation and vindication. And that makes you very open to this kind of manipulation. And this is why censorship like we've experienced and social media manipulation is effective. So I know we could go into that for a whole hour. I know you've got plenty to say on that. Hopefully we can get you back for a panel in a week or two like we, we had originally planned uh, with journalists who had been censored. We had a couple other last minute confirmations that were too late actually this morning for you. But the, the last big question I've got for you, Miko, is for those of us in this field, what do we do to fight this business-wise to make sure that what we are doing is sustainable and how does society support independent media? Man, you know, I... million dollar question. My best guess is in the route I'm going to go this time is uh, crowdfunding and sponsors. Um, I get, I get the whole like fuck that. I'm doing this because the right thing. I do get that, but the problem is with a lot of this shit is you're challenging money at the end of the day. With almost any sort of corruption there is, you're challenging money. Um, a shaky cell phone video can only do so much. So, like, the financial part is getting hard. And that's where I, I think finding some sort of sponsor that isn't going to try and control you at all. That's the important part is making sure that you're not controlled. I kind of feel like I remember I, I used to like uh, Vice. I still think some good stuff comes out of Vice. But when you started seeing Nike and all this other shit fucking pop up, they toned down a lot. You know, this wasn't this went from running around with the warlords of Liberia to fucking teen pop kids popping X in their ass and shit. You know, I mean, it, it went from such a level of what the fuck to this other level of like, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> like, so I, I don't know. Finding that balance where you don't basically sell your soul to the devil. But aside from that, like, I mean, in order to actually survive, and this goes back to what we kind of touched on earlier, I think like the only way to really get the true protection is to get somebody with the balls to try and challenge to to amend the first amendment to stretch over to social media and the internet now because oh, no, plays... no 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 you think the government the, the first amendment has been such a success let's let's use it really really Nico. I, I that's know. your answer now is let's have more government involvement in this well I, the ultimate desire of it would be for less government to basically give us the same right to stand on a corner and be like, hey, fuck you, asshole. Now, I know that those rights are going to be infringed upon, but that's like one of the only ways I see even plausible because the thing is social media has become such a part. I mean, we go to it for everything. You buy shit, okay, you so, get your so political. Mika, Mika, I love your answer about the financial independence. I think that's really important. The, the government thing, I just want you to consider a couple of things that are essential to the libertarian perspective on this, that yes, you can have government come in and do good things, but if government created the problem in the first place, it's better to take away how government is creating the problem rather than putting a Band-Aid solution on it as more government might be if it doesn't have worse unintended consequences to begin with. I mean, I don't trust the government to come in and well, we're gonna we're gonna well we're gonna come in and say what censorship is okay on social media, not no censorship because we're still gonna allow for some. And the way the government created this problem, like let's look to the real source: it's corporatism, it's intellectual property, all the other ways that government supports these social media giants, these tech giants against competition that would open us up. And I think the future is free speech with blockchain technology, fully distributed, no central. Anything is even in the position to censor anybody at that point. 
But with that, I know, I know, I know, you really want to get into that one. Well, well I mean, in, got... <laughs> in in a perfect world, though, that would be. But the thing is, is trying to convert your average Facebook user to that platform. Like in in my perfect vision of a uh, First Amendment over uh, basically the internet is to just fuck off, leave it alone, unless there's like a felony being committed. I know that that's a dream that probably wouldn't happen, but at the same time, we're already in this dangerous point where these, I mean, this isn't little money we're talking about. We're talking about corporations making huge fucking money and they're not going to tone it back without somebody saying, no, they're allowed to say, fuck you. I hate white people. You know, I mean, that's, there has to be something above the money, which our government is supposed to be above the money, but that goes into an even deeper yeah, issue. Yeah, of... yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, again, the perfect world is one with conscientious consumers and the market is the solution and people know to not pay attention to people who are deceiving them. All right, Miko, this has been a blast. We really just have a few minutes left here. I want to check in with the audience. If we can get Jim back up on stage here and see what other comments or questions we might have for our guests or just, on this topic in general, Jim. Yeah, we got a we got a couple of questions here, uh, real quick. Before the questions, ten fifty four says, "Good interview." Miko has a very calming tone of voice, like a foul mouthed Jeffrey Tucker. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually well I've actually been told that before. Oh yeah, nice. Okay, uh, our very own producer has a question for you, CJ Abernathy at Miko. Uh, there he is, right there. You want to ask your own question, CJ? You're muted. <laughs> All right. So, hey, uh, Miko, I'm so glad you can make it today. As you know, I'm a, a big supporter of your work, a fan of it, so to this speak. This is true. And yes, I, 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 I do find your voice to be very soothing. And yes, that of a foul mouth, uh, uh, soothing voice to listen to, but an honest voice nonetheless. And I, I've hey, been all watching- I got. All I hey, CJ, all I have to do to sound like Miko is take steroids and smoke more weed. I mean, do you? I, we can do this. I. Uh, I, 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 uh, I'm a little concerned that I'll actually never be able to be monetized on YouTube. <laughs> Just from my, I can't, I can't filter myself. So that's. So you'll never Miko, be advertiser friendly. Sorry, CJ. No, Back to no you. you're fine. No. So, 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 Miko, I, I, I've watched you cover sovereign citizens off and on, and write articles about differing sovereign citizens and their involvement in CPS and family law cases. Have you been censored in that coverage? Have you? experienced any retaliation that that uh, would lead you to not covering th that topic no honestly they let me shit all over those people <laughs> like with no problem whatsoever um about the worst thing is just the people themselves getting mad about it but i mean i've also i i caused some problems within the white supremacist community and they like put me on chip mania and all this other horrible shit so, and I pissed off a Benghazi war hero. So, I mean, the threats of a sovereign citizen doesn't completely scare me, especially because, I mean, fuck, you've seen some of the ones I go after. I, I don't go after, like, the minor sovereigns. No. I go who's after the, the full-blown fucking... Been, who's been the biggest sovereign citizen or group that you have covered? Man. You know, I almost want to give it to Timothy Charles Homeseth because he's not technically a sovereign citizen, uh, but he adopts a lot of their crazy stuff. And and just so people are aware, this is Timothy Ho Charles Homeseth, the alleged creator of the pe Pentagon Pedophile Task Force, which is one person removed from Donald Trump, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Well, okay. So technically that's supposed to be a uh, field McConnell, which field didn't claim it quite as much, but yeah, D Timothy is the quote unquote photographer for the Pentagon pedophile task force. Um, and he's doing videos out of his car while on, asking on, for donations. Yeah. On McDonald's Wi-Fi. Um, I talked to the Pentagon. I got a response from the Pentagon saying that the, <laughs> the Pentagon Pedophile Task Force does not exist. Um, and yeah, then, he's still out there saying it's real. 
Well, and see, it's part of like his uh, connections because then you got David Strait, who David Strait is like a full blown fucking psychopath, sovereign citizen that flies around the country on other people's dime, promising them that he can get them out of any crime that exists all the way up to clearing up their bankruptcy to getting their children home all off of fucking sovereign shit. And David and Strait, it, that that's it. supposedly their uh, one guy, like Field McConnell and Timothy. David Strait is supposedly the one guy away from President Trump because David claims that he goes into the Rose Garden with Melania and, and Donald all the time and they thank him and it... it so Has there been, ever been a picture of these people together in the Rose Garden? There's professional photographers. You think why would that why would you need a picture? I mean, I'm just don't saying. You, people, don't you just believe them? No, of course <laughs> not. We want that in evidence. But Miko, and then and, this and, is post Me Too movement, bud. We we just believe straight up that. <laughs> Yeah, right, but, so, but no. So that's why I think them though, because David Strait, because like I said, Timothy isn't necessarily a sovereign citizen, but oh my God, the reach is fucking insane. Fields' reach was insane, and then you got that David Strait, sovereign like the Holy Father of both the shitheads. So and, I mean, I and they know. tend to breed off other like uh, entities and people that inspire them to do do uh more and and would you say uh, what would you say if you had to put a number on it percentage wise of, of cps cases these people try to get involved in oh they're terrible um i mean they like there's one in specific when court finishes uh melissa deagle for example when when her court is finished i I know a lot of things about that situation that I can't publicly say yet, and I need court to finish. Uh, but there's a lot of them. I mean, like that's where like Arlena Willis they got her to fill uh, file all those sovereign documents where like she declared to the court that she was not dead or lost at sea, um, which is common with the sovereigns that flooding of just nonsensical court documents. Um, so I mean, I don't know. I've I've noticed. Most of the legitimate. Okay, so if if you got your kid taken, I'm not saying that CPS should just be out there taking kids. Like, first they should be offering resources. That's what they were fucking developed for. Um, so a lot of times they are quick to just do a removal. At that same time, if you have someone that believes this sort of stuff as hard as they they do there may have been reasons there to remove that child because obviously there's something wrong with this person's judgment overall to even believe some of the nonsense that comes out of these people's mouths. Do you think that the government, in, in a sense, through the family court CPS system kind of creates that worldview for the sovereign citizen movement to target then CPS and, and family well, law cases? But sovereign, uh, sovereign isn't C CPS based. I mean, oh, like, no, it, I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying there's a, a target there for that's placed upon people that go through this. Well, not because this is the thing. Like, um, with sovereign starting back in the '80s as actually a, a racist movement. Um, it was meant for white people to basically exist without federal government um, and a misunderstanding of the Fourteenth Amendment. So. It's it's all government, which in all honesty, at some points they do have um, legitimate arguments just mixed under a lot of misinformation. Uh, but like they I guess they have a good point. They might not have a good argument, but they, they like mean well at the end of it. Like, you know, you shouldn't just have your house ripped from you and end up homeless on the streets over some bullshit. But. And funny how you never get censored when talking about people who are trying to stand up to government when you are rightfully critical of them. And I'm, I'm not saying the sovereign citizen movement doesn't have plenty of critical or plenty of shit that's crazy to be critical of that is just harmful. But if you want to be critical of an anti-government group, oh, that's great. You'll never get censored doing that. Oh, no, not at all. Um but you know the thing with sovereigns and it's also why it's I, i've spent so much time with it it's not it's not like 
Q, where Q's even kind of splintered off. Um, with Sovereign, there's no main base. There's like no organization. There's just tons of little groups that are focused around different things they can scam people for. Because with the, the 99% of fucking Sovereign shit, this guy isn't out there doing it um, just because he's a nice guy and telling these people he's information. They have to pay some sort of monthly fee. They have to make a donation to help them get to their city. They have to buy tickets. There's some sort of money involved in the vast majority of Sovereign, these Sovereign scam I know circles. You, I know you covered one scam circle where they were saying that there's an affidavit that can get your kids back and they, right. and they and they scammed a brazilian family uh you know these are pretty common things and i know we could talk for hours on sovereign citizens but uh you know i i just wanted to say again miko that i, I think that the point and that i was trying to get out of that is what you stated is that and adam stated is that you you're not getting censored in in that aspect no not talking, at all when you're talking about people that are being critical of government and 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 uh and, and and when you're the one defending essentially government against people that are out, admittedly out there being wacky in their beliefs bloody thumbprints i mean scamming people in cps it's not just that by allowing that coverage the overall perception of anti-government everybody is being distorted to be let, let's assume everybody's like the fringe outliers, right? If you censor stories about every other group, but then you look at the sovereign citizens and say, oh, we're not going to censor anything critical about them. Well, then everybody assumes that everybody who identifies as anything having to do with sovereign citizen or anti-government or libertarian anything is just like those people. Well, and I think that's where it's our responsibility um, and also, like, where I was going that with that, though, uh, CJ, like, it's not CPS targeted. It's anywhere that they can scam somebody that's been affected by the law. So, Makes sense to me. Thanks for asking my question, though, Miko. I definitely appreciate it. And I know there's yeah. a few good ones in the comments here, so I'll um, get back to it. But with, with the uh, CPS, or CPS, the sovereign part in covering it, that's our responsibility because there are dangers of that group. Like, if you if you listen to a sovereign on your CPS case, you're going to lose your fucking kid. Like you're never going to see your child again. Um, I believe if that's an area that you want to cover, it's your responsibility to let people know and give them this warning, but also at the same time to be very specific like when it comes to my sovereign kiddos i focus on specific people and point out where they're wrong and use their terminology um because if you don't then that's where that problem is created that it's easy to lump other people into it if you're very specific it's like nah, no 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 i wasn't talking about constitutionalists i wasn't talking about militias i was talking about this group of six fucking lunatics that are ripping people off so it's just that responsibility of being very uh, direct with who you're bashing and shitting on. That's a good point. Uh, we got uh, no time for one more question, probably from Periscope, Fester Fink, uh, and it's addressed for Adam and Miko. Do you think headline media is the future? It's the, it's the now. Yeah, but I think yeah, they're saying it's... like next level to where even like, I mean, I guess it would it would imply some sort of fact checking base, you know, and we all know how you're going to do that. Yeah, I, I'm with Miko here. It is it's not the future; it's the present. And in the present, driven by Twitter especially, it's being done in a very negative way. But I think in the future, it'll be in a much more positive way, like an honest version of the Drudge Report where you're able to survey the world's news very efficiently, very effectively, and zoom in on what you want. And you'll be able to find a headline aggregator where the headlines aren't deceptive. Unfortunately, the market demand for honest journalism isn't there yet. But we're working on it, right, Miko? Well, and man, <laughs> that that is just a, uh, that's such a shitty subject. Um, <laughs> it's, I mean, it's just, it kills, you know, like, especially, and that's why I'm actually at the moment, I'm debating on even doing any more articles and just focusing on video for a while and then go from there. 
but it, it just hurts because I mean you put so much time and work and source checking into like the 2400 word article and then like people just you can tell I've had people in I and I think it actually was like a 2400 word article I posted it and within two minutes not even two minutes somebody commented saying that that was fake and it was like there's no way that you read that like you you literally did not read that and then it turned out that the argument they used actually was in like the third paragraph of the article um so it's uh, you know i i don't know but also it's america look at us look at how we live look at tv we're constantly things are just flashing in your face well, look at fox news there's fucking warnings here there's all this shit there's blips we live off blips Facebook, you're just scrolling through. Twitter, you're scrolling through. We date now by scrolling through. I mean, it's we our our attention span is being beat into the fucking ground ruthlessly. That's no for that's not the fault of the people either. I mean, there's so many different things that are forcing this the shortening of the attention span. You can't even be mad at people about it. It just fucking sucks. And we have to learn to adapt to it. Yeah, well, we are adapting. I'm a little more optimistic. I still can step back and go, hey, you and me having this conversation like this is huge progress compared to just 40 years ago when it would be us bullshitting at the water cooler. And that's as far as these kinds of counter mainstream conversations I agree. go. I agree. So, I mean, so, hey, there, there's, go. there's goods and bads. Yeah. So, I, well, I, I still, I, I, I cling to faith in the words of Martin Luther King Jr. that the arc of history bends towards justice. And even without his words, my own analysis tells me that humanity progresses, that we dance forward, two steps forward, one step backward sometimes, but that humanity progresses and technology is fundamentally empowering now miko this has been a lot of fun and i really do appreciate your time today i hope we can get you on for a panel i think in a couple of weeks we'll, we'll do this again get into this topic with a few more journalists who have been oh, yeah. censored you're, but i want to give you the welcome. chance to you're welcome to uh, pop over on mine at some yes, point too. Let's do that. No, i just started like, doing i just started I, doing interviews and shit i just had vermin on the other week nice Oh, yeah, hey, I got Supreme. yourself from Marcus. You you get texts there. Yeah, yeah, that's the same. All right, we'll just we'll just set it up like that. But hey, for everything we've covered today, Miko, please take the final word to sum it up and let people know how they can support you. Um, honestly, you know, I I suck at uh, <laughs> I suck at uh, uh, promoting myself. Uh, you can do way better than supporting me, and you can support everybody by doing like what I said earlier, just fact checking. Um, don't just run with information. If you do have a journalist, um, hell, if you have a, a video game streamer, if you like what they do, throw them five bucks every now and again. It's the same as seeing a movie. Pay the same cost as a movie ticket if you even receive entertainment from it because we really are hitting a point where uh, crowdfunding is becoming a bigger source than ever. That's why you got places like The Guardian and shit like that still doing their crowdfunding. Mm. Um, we're being stomped out as far as monetization goes in a lot of in a lot of <laughs> uh, major platforms, so I don't know. If you appreciate them, just show that you appreciate it. Help the work go. If you can't afford five bucks, share it out for the person. If uh, Besides that, yeah, man, my biggest thing right now is fact-checking. Um, I don't even know if you to show the site because, like I said, I'm I haven't really done many articles recently, and I don't know. Like I said, I might take a break for a minute to just focus on video and get my software experience up and shit. I don't know. Well, it's a great point. It's the one I try to end interviews with when I get on other people's platforms to say that this technology means nothing without an active and engaged audience. And so if you like 
Miko's perspective, please go to discussglobal.com. You can find him on Twitter, YouTube, whatever it is. All the, all the links are there. Uh, and you can go. even, if you just hop over on Facebook, you can tell me you like me, hate me. We can argue. I like to argue on my Facebook. And it's just Miko Hayes on Facebook. That's the best place you're going to get a response from me. Like, like I said, YouTube, I'm not ever going to read my comments if I'm not live. All you can burn in hell for all I care. <laughs> but, but no, I do appreciate all the supporters I have and everything. Yeah, Facebook is probably uh, just my profile because I did. I would. I do have a Miko Hayes page too and a discuss page. But honestly, it was going to be such a fucking hassle. I'm just using my Miko Hayes profile now for a lot of shit all right thank you so much for joining us today brother it's been a lot of fun yeah, thank I, you I for having me. everybody's as optimistic as i am about the potential in independent journalism well i'm kind of a i'm kind of a a, 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 a scathed and jaded prick here so I do still have some positive, like there's a little bit of positive attitude. I don't mean to come off as completely negative, but that's typically where my mindset is. <laughs> we persist. Anyway, it's been an awesome show. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm just going to sign off right from here. I don't think we, we, we normally do good news. If you want to check it out, goodnewsnetwork.org for a fun perspective. But with all that being said, mwah, peace and love, y'all. Choose happiness and be excellent to each other.